Good morning, friends, and welcome again from St. Joseph's Church in Port Hawkesbury. It's hard to believe that after uh, so many months of being able to gather even with limited numbers that we're back to, to this lockdown period. And as difficult as that is and as challenging as that is for so many, we're, to, you know, we're very, very pleased that we're able to offer this service and to gather with you in this virtual environment. And so we're very grateful that you've chosen to join with us today. As always, we invite you, of course, to, to participate in the liturgy in the, in the way that you feel that you're able and comfortable at this point in time. And again, it's always good when folks um, share their comments online and offer peace to one another and offer good wishes. As we continue to gather together, as I say, even virtually with this time, our church is not just us ministering to you in this way, but it's how we reach out and minister to one another. It becomes ever more important in these days. And it really is our belief that, as we hear today in the gospel, that we are grafted onto this great branch of Jesus Christ, onto his life in the power of his spirit and the grace of the Father, that we're called, that maybe this time is a real invitation to us. While it's very difficult for us, but that we're called, that we're not alone, and that so many are in need, and in whatever way we're able to reach out to take the life from that branch onto which we are grafted, to spread that life to our brothers and sisters, those who are in need, particularly the lonely and alone at this point in time. Even a phone call, an email, some reaching out is really, is really powerful. There have been some lovely um, notes and comments in our community this week of people recognizing that some of our folks are, are alone or in difficulty or may actually have the virus and are willing to do their shopping, are willing to do deliveries, perhaps bring a meal. And that's very heartening to, to see that and it really becomes part of what it means to be a member of this body of Christ. So we thank you for that in advance. Today, of course, is a bit of a celebration for our diocese as we recognize the deacons who have been ordained for service in this diocese, they too are grafted onto this great branch of Jesus Christ in their own particular way, have been called to service. While we would love to have you gathered with us in person for this celebration today as we recognize Deacon Berkeley Guthrow with his service, we, we debated whether or not we would do this or wait till we were able to gather, but we felt it was important that even if we're gathering virtually to recognize the service of the deacons and Deacon Berkeley in particular. So after the homily today, we'll be having a short, a short little ritual to go through that. And um, if you if you care to, you can uh, send some comments along. Maybe you want to pass on your thanks be to God, um, which would be your part if we were gathered here with your ritual uh, to Deacon Berkeley, and I'll be happy to share those notes with him. So here we are, but we're not alone. God is with us, Jesus loves us, the Spirit strengthens us and empowers us. So let's collect ourselves, pause for a moment as we prepare to celebrate today this great sacrament of the Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We've assembled today, while well, there's just the three of us here today for, for liturgy, we have gathered together wherever we are. This great, this, there's always just one Mass. And we've gathered today to celebrate these sacred mysteries before us. So let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, and Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, 
You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, constantly accomplish the paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul had come down to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him, brought him to the apostles, and described for them how on the road he had seen the Lord, who had spoken to him, and how in Damascus Saul had spoken boldly in the name of Jesus. So Saul went in and out among them in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He spoke and argued with the Hellenists, but they were attempting to kill him. When the believers learned of it, they brought Saul down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. Meanwhile, the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and was built up. Living in the fear of the Lord, and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. The word of the Lord. Be Lord, from you comes my praise in the great congregation. Lord, from you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. Lord, from you comes my praise in the great congregation. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust. Lord, from you comes the praise in the great congregation. I shall live for him, posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. Lord, from you comes my praise in the great congregation. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. 
And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and God knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. Whoever obeys his commandments abides in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in them bears much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. In a few moments, I will stand before Father Conrad and you as members of our parish community that I have been called to serve by our diocesan bishop, Wayne Joseph. I will be asked some questions as part of the ritual for the recognition of deacons held every year on this fifth Sunday of Easter. These questions and this ritual 
are not done in secret behind closed doors, but are carried out here within the parish community, even today if it's online, that I have been called to serve. This ritual today is a wonderful opportunity for each of us, for our pastor, Father Conrad, for our parish team and leadership committees, and each of you as members of St. Joseph and Holy Trinity parishes, for my family and for myself as your deacon, to listen to and to reflect on the questions that are being asked of me, and for each of us to answer in a way a yes or no as to how I have been carrying out these things asked of me as a deacon from my ordination almost 10 years ago on September the 16th, 2011. My call to be a deacon came from within my parish community and the diocese, but it was up to Jesse and I to discern if we were called to serve the diocese together as a deacon and his wife. We are supported in our journey by a caring and loving diaconate community. For the call to be a deacon was not a call discerned by me alone, but by my wife and family together as a family. After my ordination, as you know, I was assigned here to join with the pastor to serve God's people of St. Joseph and Holy Trinity. It has been through my working and personal relationship with Father Conrad that has enabled me to grow and deepen my discernment in who I am as a deacon and in how I am being called to serve and minister to each of you as God's people and my brothers and sisters in Christ. As a deacon, I am called to carry out my service to you as a minister of the word and of the altar and of charity and service. As a faithful minister of the gospel, I have tried to pray and meditate upon the sacred scriptures so as to be a faith-filled preacher of God's word to you each Sunday and at other liturgical gatherings. My diaconate instructors told us to stay within seven minutes for a homily. I have tried, but at times they've been a little longer. It has been a blessing in my diaconate ministry to journey with families as they prepare to bring their children for baptism and with adults through the RCIA as they seek to discover and experience new life through their new encounters with Jesus. These relationships were also enhanced through our parish faith formation and sacramental programs our confirmation and adult Alpha sessions, and the many other events held by our parish. I have especially enjoyed getting to know young couples and older couples as they prepare to exchange and express their love and commitment to each other through the sacrament of matrimony. But it is through the care for the sick and dying that I have come to be more open with my own relationship with Jesus and to deepen my discernment to my call to be a deacon. It is especially in these moments of grief, loss, and pain that a family and I together must slow down, be still, and listen to what needs to be spoken, heard, and held in trust. A deacon's ministry of the word and the altar must lead him outward as a deacon I cannot just dress up in nice vestments and a collar and look good, but I must reach out in service to our brothers and sisters. I have sought to do this in various ways, but it has been especially through the calling depot that I have come to encounter the presence of Jesus in those who seek to belong, who struggle to provide for themselves and their families, who crave for peace and safety in their journey and who simply need some basic items to help make life a little better. My service ministry has not been carried out alone, however, but it has been strengthened and deepened through the support of local businesses and to each of you through your generous donations of school supplies, clothing, household, and other items 
that have shown your care and compassion for your brothers and sisters. It is within these encounters that as a deacon I am called to be the humble presence of Jesus the servant who came not to be served but to serve to all those that I encounter through my ministries. As a deacon, I am called to bring the needs and the worries, the burdens and joys of those I encounter in my ministry back to our faith community and place them in offering with the bread and wine upon the altar to the Eucharistic sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As your deacon, I have been called to be present with you and to lead our faith community in prayer during various liturgical gatherings and celebrations. I want to assure you also that I, hold, that I hold each of you in my morning and evening prayers. I have tried to live and serve among you as a faithful and trusted servant. Jesse and I have tried to be good examples of how we live out our promises made to each other almost 39 years ago to love and to honor each other. I don't know who deserves a bigger medal. In our gospel today, we hear Jesus tell his disciples, abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in them bears much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Each of us as children of God are united as branches to Jesus as the vine because he is the most beloved son of God. We are grafted to Jesus through our faith and nourished through our baptismal waters so that each of us can reach out in service to our brothers and sisters. I have come to realize this through the support of each of you, and especially my spiritual director, that I have never been alone in my ministry and service as a deacon. Jesus has always been with me, because as we heard Jesus tell us in our gospel today, apart from me, you can do nothing. This is the foundation upon which I carry out my call to be your deacon. I can do nothing without the mercy, compassion, forgiveness, and love of Jesus in my life. So that I can be the presence of the mercy, compassion, forgiveness, strength, and love of Jesus in your life. Today, I give to each of you my promise to continue to work with Father Conrad and our parish team so that I may serve each of you as your humble servant. So we stand today, and I'd invite you, if you're at home, maybe you would, you would wish to stand with us. Deacon Berkeley, will you commit yourself to join me in the service of the people of God in this community of St. Joseph's and the community of Holy Trinity as a minister of the Word of God, of the altar, and of charity? With the help of God, I will. Will you be a faithful minister of the gospel, meditating upon the word of God, preaching it in the Sunday assembly, and proclaiming it each day with your life? With the help of God, I will. Will you be a faithful minister of the sacrament of baptism, so that adults who are seeking new life in Jesus Christ, and infants who are brought to the church by their families, may be reborn in the waters of baptism. With the help of God, I will.
Will you faithfully visit our people and have special care for the sick and for the dying, bringing them the healing power of Christ in Viaticum and our sacred food for the journey to the heavenly kingdom? With the help of God, I will. Will you be the church's witness for the union of husband and wife and provide guidance and support for families as they grow in their Christian life together? With the help of God, I will. Will you provide for the needs of the poor and give visible witness to God's call for justice and truth here in our community? With the help of God, I will. Will you lead this community to prayer and praise when they gather on Sundays as the people of God? With the help of God, I will. Will you pray with our people and for our people so that God's will may be done among us? With the help of God, I will. People of God, this is your deacon. He will live among you as your servant, as your companion, and your guide in the Christian life. Thanks be to God. Thank you. So as we continue to stand together, as we continue to, to pray, let us stand now and profess what we believe. That I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us pray today for all who long for deep and lasting relationships. For the church. That we may continually draw from Christ and bear a rich harvest of virtues and gospel values for God's glory. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For global leaders that they may respond to social, political, and global pandemic health issues with a spirit of justice and a concern for the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For deacons ministering in our diocese. That they may draw us closer to our God through their ministry of the word, altar, and service find fulfillment in their call, and enjoy the support of their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who see themselves as spiritual but not religious. That they may discover God's presence in this community and develop an, a new understanding of church through relationships with us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are considering suicide. That God will open them to the beauty of life, free them from self-condemnation, and help them to recognize the love that others have for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, especially Stan McDonnell and Janet Bernard, who have asked for prayers, and for those in our community who have contracted the COVID virus. That Christ, the source of life, will ease their pain, heal their illness, and restore them to their loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all mourning the deaths of loved ones, especially Jerry McDaniel on the death of his brother Colin. May they experience God's comforting presence and the loving support of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God who reaches out to us in so many ways, we are called again to live in and remain in a deep relationship with your Son, the True Vine. Strengthen our desire to respond to his invitation, despite its demands. We pray in the name of the one who calls us to bear fruit. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Bless be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For the, with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us 
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Wayne Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace of Christ, Father. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Living and eternal God, you draw us together into a holy communion. We are scattered today in support of the common good of your people. Through the power of this Eucharist in which we all participate, unite us in Christ to you and to one another. Through the grace of the Holy Spirit, help us to live as the image of Jesus Christ, your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen.
body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you've imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder that our parish office is closed for the next uh, foreseeable future. We will be open for business, but you just can't drop in and, and to and to visit. So if you need anything, we just invite you to phone or to email and we'll be happy to, to take care of you. Also, our online auction is still, uh, is still on the go. So you can shut down some things, but some things you can't. So that's, uh, so that's, a, that's a really good thing. But to you, Deacon Berkeley, thank you for your service. Thank you for standing as witness to us, in, not only today in this formal way, but in every day. Thank you. You're a real gift. You're welcome. The Lord be with you. Your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.